Hello and welcome to Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. We are your hosts, Vidas Pinkavichus. And Ushamut Zide Pinkavichin. We've been mastering secrets of organ playing for more than 20 years and sharing them on this blog since 2011. On this show, which we create from our home in Vilnius, Lithuania, we strive to help you grow in every area of organ playing, including practice, technique, repertoire, sight reading, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory, harmony, and many others. Our hope is to help you become a complete musician, or what we call as total organist, a program which we have created to help you reach your dreams faster than you would do on your own. If you are new here, we invite you to subscribe to receive free updates of this blog at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video on how to master any organ composition and 10-day organ playing mini chords. And now let's go to the podcast for today. Hi guys, this is Vidas. And Osha. Let's start episode 311 of Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. This question was sent by David. And he writes that uh, he is dreaming uh, uh, to play organs for fundraising concerts and for worship accompaniment but uh, obstacles in the way of his dream is a busy life and that means uh, that he cannot practice as often as he'd like or sure have you ever played uh, at uh, fundraising concerts i don't remember now actually i might Played some in the United States, but mm-hmm. it was long way back. I remember playing for Kasparini organ in in the Holy Ghost Church in Vilnius um, for uh, members of local Rotary Club, and they t- tried to gather funds for uh, restoration of this instrument. Uh, but. But that was a, I think, small sum of money in comparison to what was needed at the time. Do you think it's, you know, such a cancer a sufficient way to f- raise funds? It seems that everybody is doing them, right? Uh, like it's it's a socially appropriate uh, way of gather funds involving community, congregation, perhaps. Uh, why not? It's one of those ways. Uh, David has a good idea for that, of course. It depends, I think, how how much congregation um, is involved in general in 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 cultural life of the parish of the church, and um, how much they feel ownership of the project, right? True. If, for example, they are alienated by some politics going on inside of the congregation, people won't bother joining in those fundraising efforts so much. Uh, I think the important thing is for them to feel welcomed and appreciated. Yes, for example, in Lithuania, I don't think you could raise money, you know, <laughs> by playing organ recital. Somehow, I, I doubt it. In general, I think in Lithuania, culturally acceptable ways to gather funds are somewhat different, right? Yes. We always see on TV. Usually, it's through pop music. Pop music culture, concerts which are broadcasted on TV. Yes, and uh, advertised you know, all over. Yes, and then people can call in and uh, a fraction of their... Call would go to... Amount of the <coughs> money they would make on that call would go to the project. But I think it's very tiny pro- uh, fraction. I'm not sure about that. But mm, I've read it that uh, in general some of those 
telephone companies are taking the big chunk. Uh, what else can can people do to gather funds uh, involving organs? Uh, how can uh, maybe think creatively to in today's environment uh, with technolo- technology going across the board? Globally, even right when you play a fundraising concert, this is just a local event. How many people will come? That many people will hear, and even smaller portion of them will react and engage and uh, give give donations. But what if people went globally with this, like? Uh, Platforms like Patreon or Kickstarter or Indiegogo. Well, I don't know. That might work. And may not. It works for many other projects, right? For technology-oriented project. Let's say you are a st- startup. You are. You have some nice invention in your mind, and you want to gather funds to complete this idea. So you first create a prototype and then show to the people like a demo version and then people get excited about that and what happens later they start to donate because this demo version is incomplete and that way could be done but with organs i've seen people do for organ restorations for example and i'm not sure if david is planning uh, to do fundraising for organ restoration let's say or just to play organ in fundraising concerts which is different yes it is because for example i i don't think you would fundraise money you know in lithuania for let's say building organ or restoring organ because in our country it's more common you know, to raise funds for for poor for you know sick people for example, we have this huge uh, food gathering thing. Mm-hmm. I think at least twice each year. There are more than, I think, a hundred grocery stores that are involved in it. And there are, you know, two or three days when you can buy products, mm-hmm. long-lasting products, and, you know, donate them. Why do you think uh, this campaign is so successful? Well, I think because it's, you know, so widely spread. And, you know, nobody wants to be hungry. (laughs) So I guess everybody, you know, thinks that today I have food, but maybe tomorrow I will not have it. And I will need support. Like they have compassion. Sure. Mm -hmm. Because truly, we have too many poor people, especially elderly. And, of course... Lonely mothers with children. All right. Um, you know what I think also? Social media might be a good catalyst for inspiring people to donate. But uh, now social media is not no longer that effective as it was before. Because uh, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, they, they all change their algorithm, al- algorithms in, th- in favor of paid advertisement or uh, communication between friends. So what you see in your Facebook feed or what I see in my Facebook feed basically reflects my, my friends to whom I'm connected uh, more strongly, right? If I, I'm not seeing all those pictures and posts from all of my network, just a fraction of it. So if, if, if a person has a fundraising event, they w- might not um, involve entire network, just a f- small portion of it, unless they decide to go the paid advertising uh, way and, uh, you know, to Facebook to show the ads 
but it's mm-hmm. somehow it contradicts the idea of raising funds, right? Because they don't have funds, first of all, just to sure. begin with. And what about those new platforms based on blockchain? Uh, we've been using Steemit for a while now, and uh, and uh, just uh, recently, I think since October, we started posting uh, on uh, Ono network. O N O it is spelled, and uh, the idea is that with every post, with every like, with every share and comment, you get back. Uh, a cryptocurrency called Onot. But it's worth nothing yet. Yet is uh, work, worth so nothing. So I, I think it's, you know, like a <laughs> play for adults. But wait until they will allow well, people to trade on exchanges. Well, well, let's see. And I think you are cherishing false hopes. False hopes? False hopes, yes. Um, Maybe, could be, but imagine if I'm right, right? If people can really uh, transfer those funds and convert them into a real currencies somehow later on, and that would change a little bit the landscape of fundraising too, because let's say David wants to raise funds playing organs. All he can do is just... All he has to do is just uh, um, document his life, posting pictures and uh, articles, and then people will like and share and engage. Uh, it could be with organ playing, of course, for organists, and uh, he will start gathering, gathering cryptocurrency. But I don't think he will get sufficient amount. We'll see in the anything. future, but <laughs> but that's the idea, you see. <clears throat> the worth, of course, of, of that token or not, is um, it depends on the on the market itself, on demand, how many people buy it. So, as you see, this is optimistic, and I am pessimistic or realistic. So maybe the truth is somewhere in the middle, right? I just believe that the world is you know, full of social injustice in general and some are very poor and the others are very rich, bloody rich. Mm-hmm. The rich get richer with any system. Yes, and I think we have more poor people in the future. Right, but maybe that's the reason they created such social blockchain based uh, networks that uh, people from poor countries could join in, in and become more financially independent. Well, let's talk about it maybe in, in two years. In a few years, yeah, we'll see. Right. Every system has its own flaws, of course. It's, uh, it's not perfect. And, of course, uh, people, w- once, once they find out that it's money involved, that you can, you know gather money for your posts and likes then they try to cheat the system right with uh, with spam comments spam content uh, bots uh, like software posting instead of humans and uh, if the system itself if the platform itself cannot get rid of those uh, fake accounts and abusers then everybody suffers you see yes We'll see in, in a few years how it develops. But I think it doesn't hurt to try, right? What if I'm right, you see, in a few years? Mm-hmm. And uh, people will wait for a few years until they see the result. Of course, the early adapters like we are will benefit more than latecomers. But you know, if you have needs today, you cannot wait for a few years. Mm-hmm. So that's the problem. If you are you know, rich enough... To be able to live well today, you can do experiments and wait for a few years. I've read that people in Venezuela, for example, very corrupt government and it's politically unstable and financially uh, basically a very struggling country. People get monthly salary of about 
ten dollars per month, not per per day, but per month. So, with with this scenario, um, earning cryptocurrency like ten dollars per month is pretty easy actually. And I've seen people do this from poor countries as well. And we are not talking about hundreds of dollars, but just tens of dollars. So that could really change the game for those people. And it, they are changing the game. Maybe there is hope, you see. Well, let's hope for it. Thanks, guys, for listening. Uh, we hope this discussion raised a few more questions, right? Maybe more questions than answers right now which is nice because we, we the more we think about it the more we can actually take action and not be a passive observers but um, take initiative and uh, and um, maybe take advantage of those new tools whatever happens in the future we don't know of course the value of those cryptocurrencies can go to zero right or it can go to the moon. We don't know, but um, that's 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 the world. Nobody can predict the future. But of course, if we sit on the couch, the the real result will be nothing, right? Those who never tried, they don't, they never lose, of course. So now, go and practice. Yes, because when you practice, miracles happen. This blog is supported by Total Organist, the most comprehensive organ training program online, where you will find courses for every area of organ playing, including technique, practice, sight reading, repertoire playing, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory and harmony, with hundreds of scores and thousands of exercises. Here is what some of the students are saying. Hugh writes, the sight reading course has helped me tremendously. Thank you very much for your SS courses and all your help. Robert writes, I found the fingerings, registration ideas and general comments to be excellent. John writes, I have found your download very helpful. It was really excellent. I have watched some of your teaching videos and when I read your instructions. I try to imagine you are there teaching me. You may feel disappointed that I am two three days behind, but I am a slow learner, and I have committed to taking the time to get it right as you say. But the other night my wife commented that she had never heard me play such a detailed melody in the left hand so well. My left hand is generally poor. Robert writes, It has been a great pleasure in my life of having discovered your courses and material as well as the YouTube work of recordings. You have a calm and pleasant way of teaching. Ron writes, Hi with the Santosha. Thank you guys. What a wonderful response to my email note to you. You've got me right, and I feel you understand my level of playing. Yes, at home and lucky that I have an organ for that reason. I am paying attention to this, and I am going to try this haha no longer secret model. Yes, and I love Caesar Frank too. What is very nice about your blog podcast is that Osha and Vidas are like a Socratic dialogue, and by bouncing things off of each other, so much more information comes out and is expressed. Your comments contain a wealth of information and understanding. I really appreciate this. It is very inspiring and will keep us moving forward. Would you like to receive the same or even better results that our students are getting? If so, join them at organduo.lt slash total dash organist. And of course, you will get the first month free too. You can cancel anytime. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to receive free updates of this blog, make sure you do that at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video how to master any organ composition and 10 day organ playing mini course. This was Vidas and Osha from Secrets of Organ Playing. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen.